So the first thing we want to do is click on this particular deck here. And when we go to edit type, the first thing we want to do is duplicate this. And we want to rename this, okay? We're going to call this deck assembly roof deck assembly one okay and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna edit and we're gonna start adding things and we're gonna think about what's going on right let's think our way through this there's structure and there's structural deck in this instance so the metal deck is gonna stay the same you see how the metal deck is locked in at zero inches right and the reason it's locked in at zero inches is because that form deck is very thin so thin that we're not going to really try and consider its thickness in Revit so Revit when you put in that you have a structural deck there it calculates for that and it doesn't allow you to change this value okay however when we go up we've got this lightweight concrete and what I want you to watch people is how our R value changed look at our R value right now our R value is 2.4 it's terrible and one of the things that the energy code will say is that you should strive to have a roof that is an R30, right? Which is pretty intense to get an R30 roof. So right now we're going to start building our roof and, and we're going to still make changes to it as time goes on, but we're going to build our roof deck and then we're going to develop a detail um, of the parrot pit condition where we show even more detail of our roof and you'll see how we do that later on in another lesson so let's start building this roof we know we're not going to have concrete so we're not going to have structure but we're going to have a thermal air layer and that first thermal air layer okay is going to be gypsum so we're going to go down to gypsum all right gypsum wall board Or actually, you know what, we're going to use the exterior fiberglass mat. And, and the reason we're going to do that is because I'm going to show you a product later that's called Dens Decking. And you'll see what I mean when I say, because we talked about Dens Glass, the yellow stuff, but then there's something called Dens Deck as well. So um, we're going to change the thickness of it to, surprise, surprise, 5 eighths of an inch. All right. Okay, now we're going to insert another layer, and that next layer is going to be a, another thermal air layer, okay? And this is going to be our insulation, okay? And so there's a couple of different ways we can go with this. We can call this rigid insulation, but it's really isoboard. And if you look in here, I don't know if they have a, a, a category for ISO board. So what I'm going to do is this. I am going to come in here and I'm going to go back to rigid insulation, right? Uh, where did I just see that? Here we go. Rigid insulation. And what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to say duplicate and I'm going to go rigid insulation iso board right polyisosorinate right that's the and iso is the nickname we have for it so it's polyisosorinate but we're calling it iso board now i'm going to go down here to the asset browser because i don't know if there's any iso board in here i'm just going to go iso see if anything pops up hey look at that polyisosorinate polyisosorinate board i'm going to click on that right and I'm going to upload it. And the reason I want to get that is because Revit's already assigned R values to that particular material. So now, see that? I've got it now. And so now mine is going to be correct, right? And so it's got that dull gray color in there, but I know isoboard is often like a, a kind of an odd shade of yellow. So I'm going to come in here, I'll grab this, 
and that's going to do for my ISO board right now. Now, I, I probably could benefit by having two layers of it in here, but for right now, I'm only going to put one layer of the ISO board in here. So there's my ISO board. And if I want to preview this assembly, I can click over here. Oh, I got to put a thick, oh, shoot. Hold on a second. <laughs> I looked before I left. Let me um, come in here and I got to start all over again, people. I'm sorry. I'm going to pause this for a second. See this. So I've got this gypsum that I call Den's Deck. And I happen to know Den's Deck, the product, is kind of a weird greenish color. So I'm going to put that in there, okay? That's the Den's Deck. And I'm going to hit Apply, okay? And I've got my 5 8 in there. Now I'm going to put another thermal layer in there. And let's see. It probably did not save my rigid insulation. Oh, yeah, it did. There's my ISO board. So it did save that. So I don't have to make it again. So I can say, OK. And I have to put a thickness in here. And right now, I'm going to put um, 2.5, 2 and a half inches in there. Because two, two and a half inches, two and a half inch layers of rigid ISO board will usually give me an R value of, of close to 30. And look at this. My R value's already gone up from 2 to what? To 18.16. So I'm on the up and up, people, right? Now, after the rigid insulation, typically we're going to have another cover board. Now, there are some ISO boards that have cover boards built into them, right? They have a almost a, a half-inch cover board in there. But we're going to put our own in there for, for the interest of what we're doing right now. So we're going to go and insert another layer, right? And this is going to be uh, another thermal air layer. Right, and it's going to be again Den's deck. So I'll go back to the gypsum to the Den's decking, and this one's only going to be a half an inch. Okay, and then finally on top of this, now I'm I'm telling you in advance we're going to make a little mistake here, and the reason we're going to make a mistake is because I want you to see something. I'm going to go and I'm going to insert, and we know we call our roofs a membrane roof. But watch what happens. I'm going to put a membrane layer in here, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say this membrane layer is going to be um, a roofing material. So let's, let's see, roofs, right? So if I click on roofs, and I right-click, and I go... Um, duplicate and I'm going to say roof TPO right and while I'm on roof TPO I'm going to go down here and see if there is something in the asset browser for TPO oh uh, nope we don't have anything in there for TPO let's see if there's something in here for PVC because they're similar in, in values. There we go. So we're going to use this polychloride flexible for ours. Okay. Um, I want to look at one more thing though before I leap. I want to go under roofing and see if they have TPO under here, under membrane. Uh, they have thermoplastic. So yeah, that's gonna that'll do for us. We can use that. And again, I want to use that because what that gives me is a what? It's gonna give me the thermal values that are closest to TPO. So that's a good thing. So this is my TPO, and that'll work, right? When I go in here and I put in that I want this to be maybe I don't know, point uh, two five inches. I'm going to put that in there. Look at the error it gives me. It says error that we can't have a membrane function because a membrane function requires zero thickness. So it can mess with your head that we call this a membrane roof in the book, yet you can't use this membrane layer. What we're going to use membrane layers for are for air barriers and for vapor barriers. This, for our roof, we don't want to use the membrane layer function. We're going to call it, in our instance, we're going to call it a finish, right? 
And once we put a finish in there, up oh, I'm getting another error. It says structural deck cannot be bound layer above because there's no layer above or it's too thin. Hold on one second. Let's see. Okay, so the other problem I was having, people, is that um, when you have a form deck here and you have this deck usage bound layer above, you have to turn this into a standalone deck. And what's going to happen when you do that, um, you see what it looks like now where it's bound layer above, right? You have to turn this to standalone deck, right? And once you do that, you can hit OK and it accepts it. So now this is what our roof assembly is going to look like. We've got the 5 8 inch gypsum here. We've got our 2 1⁄2 inch layer of um, polyisosorinate or ISO board. Then we've got a half inch cover board on top. And then we've got our membrane roof on top of that. Okay. I'm going to hit OK. And now that changes my roof. So my roof is where it's supposed to be now. I'm going to go to SD just so you can see that. All right. I'll go back to wireframe or hidden line. All right. So the first thing we want to do is recognize there's our roof deck, right? But where should that be sitting? That roof deck has to sit on top of my what? Of my joist. And now because it's not bound like it was before, I've got to consider that there's a couple of inches in here, right? That I have to take into consideration. So Let's see if we can adjust this. If we click on that now, see the height offset for level? What if we put two inches in there? Up, oh, maybe it's two and a half. Let me try that one more time. Huh. Let me check this distance in here. Um, it's an eighth inch. Okay. All right, so it's an eighth inch less than that. So what is two and a half minus an eighth? Boy, I'm really bad at my math today. There we go. So we need to change that to two and three eighth inches, and then we're sitting on top of our joist, okay? So now the problem is, is that our roof level, right, where it is 48.6, we're not going to necessarily change our level datum at this time right now, but we are going to definitely consider how this, all right, how we have this drawn, and we're going to actually go to level five in our next video on the roof level, and we're going to physically adjust our roof. But I'm going to go ahead and stop and let you all work for a while and try and get caught up to me, okay? And I'm going to go to posting this video right after, we, right after I stop it.